Hi, I'm Dr. Vera Tarman, host for the I'm Sweet Enough, the September Sugar Free podcast. And today we have Bitten Johnson here uh, from Sweden. She is a nurse by training. She's well known as the European voice on food addiction. She has her own practice called Bitten's Addiction um, and is the author of a book called The Sugar Bomb. She uh, uh, teaches professionals on the clinical management of food addiction diagnosis and treatment. So is uh, very well um, tuned both to speaking to the public and also professionals about food addiction. Um, she's also a specialist on, on the world-renowned keto website called The Diet Doctor. So she can talk a lot about um, keto and food addiction. And specifically today, I would like to address the idea about intermittent fasting. Thank you, Vera. I'm very, very honored to be with you. Okay. So could you, do you mind just giving a thumbnail sketch about um, your journey, how you got to uh, the world of food addiction, and then how you sort of uh, moved into uh, keto and your work with the diet doctor? Well, you know, I had no idea I was a sugar addict and I ended up in treatment for my alcoholism in 1985. So the 24th this month, I will be sober for 34 years. Nobody talked about sugar addiction, but the strange thing was that there were very overweight people and very, very anorectic people. And they talked about that they had sort of the same illness in the same wing as we alcoholics and drug addicts. And the worst part was that I was extremely fatigued. I mean, I could sleep 14 hours and I almost fell asleep standing. Uh -huh. I almost drove in a ditch twice driving the car. I was, you know, could fall asleep in an instant. And I thought I had some severe illness or a tick bite or you know what, but uh -huh. deep down I knew that it had to do something with the way I was eating. But it's weird. I quit alcohol, I quit cigarettes, but I can't quit chocolate and ice cream. And she said, for the first time in my life, I heard the term. This was 26 years ago in October. Uh -huh. you must be a food addict. I'm not addicted to food. I mean, I can eat food. Uh, <laughs> I think I had the biggest worst relapse when I was 48. I will be 67 this November. Uh -huh. So that was when I went into menopause. Uh -huh. And I had no idea what was going on. But that was horrible. And then I got help from uh, a sponsor in the US that helped me tremendously uh -huh. in, in FAA, Food Addicts Anonymous. Yes. So that's when I started to catching on because I never felt uh, really at home in OA because I'm not a compulsive overeater. Yeah. And I also realized with all the addiction training I had that it was my addiction making me eat. It wasn't emotions. The emotions I ate on was caused by the addiction. Yes. So it was the merry-go-round. So that was an important knowledge for me. Uh, I got introduced to a low-carb, high-fat, Yes. Uh, by a writer here in Sweden. He wrote about me in his book and people started saying, look at, at the Stan Studer's book. He mentions you and some other people. I had already met people within the functional medicine field, you know, orthomolecular medicine. And they started telling me that uh, grains is really not good for us. Right. And I also met this old biologist in Sweden. He was a teacher and he said that grain is not for humans. It's only for rats. Uh. Only rats can break down it with the feet in. Uh. And so humans shouldn't eat it. Uh, that it was like uh, abrasive on our villi. People that were bread junkies, yes. they relapsed much easier. They had a much harder time staying away from bread because, you know, bread is so good for you. Yes. And, and the thing was that once they relapsed, they didn't get back on track. They got so sick. Yeah. I mean, the craving was immense. And then I could compare it with the ones that are jokingly, like me, call hardcore addicts. You know, we want the chocolate and ice cream. Uh -huh. We're not interested in the grain. Uh, and, and I saw that there was a big difference. And I started asking, you know, naturopathic doctors and nutritional experts, what's going on here? I started to read about, you know, the low carb, high fat, and it made sense. And the thing that made sense was that our brain contains of fat. It is so much fat in our brains. And I was interested in neurons and neurotransmitters uh -huh. and the fatty acid profile in our brain. And, you know, uh, I started trying to eat low carb, high fat. So I took away, you know, I, I didn't have any grains. 
but I started to add butter and olive oil. The, the media in Sweden called it the deadly fat uh, diet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, uh, by time, with the time I had cut down more and more, I've taken away more and more, but yes. whenever I take something away, I add fat. I don't okay. add anything else. Okay. So that's what I, 2016, yes. uh, I, that's when I really went keto. I mean, really, really high fat. Okay. And, you know, started daring to slab on fat. And uh, uh, that's when I felt better than ever after that. And keto to me is low carb without milk products plus butter. Okay. So it's protein, any kind of protein. Yes. Red meat, uh, wild meat, fish, chicken, eggs. Yes. Uh, and um, uh, the only thing I eat is fruit oils, like olive oil, uh, avocado oil, uh -huh. MCT oil, coconut oil, butter, ghee. Mm -hmm. Those are the only fat sources I use. Nothing okay. else. Okay. Yeah. And uh, then uh, veggies. And, so, and veggies. Yeah. So what kind of veggies? Because uh, the veggies are still carbs. They're complex carbs. But Oh, yeah, yeah. But, you know, I don't eat a lot of veggies. I don't eat maybe half a handful or something. Oh. Uh, I love asparagus. Uh-huh. In Sweden, I have wild mushrooms. Uh, um, I can have broccoli. So how cauliflower. many ounces in a day might you have of uh, veggies? Uh, well, you know, I never weigh and measure. So uh, if, if I say uh, one full. Okay. Yeah. 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 Is it possible to be a vegetarian or a vegan using your plan? Just, just as a statement. Uh, well. I don't know how that's going to go. I don't work with vegans because I don't know what to give them for essential amino acids in the protein way. So animal, it has to be animal fat in our brain. It's my, I'm totally 100% convinced about that. Well, you know, actually I'm not too keen on fasting and that's something okay. I write in my own group and when I teach people because okay. I think it's a very dangerous word for food addicts. Remember that I'm talking only for food addicts. Yes, yes, absolutely. I don't talk for diabetes, I don't talk for people with harmful use, no, I'm not, no, food thank addicts. You, thank you for making that distinction. So let's define what intermittent fasting is uh, before we um, talk talk about it specifically for people who don't. Well, you know, uh, the word it means so many things for so many people. It yes. could be, you know, drinking only water for one day or four day or six day. Yes. People have all kinds of ideas what fasting is. In yes. my world, Vera, fasting is starving. Yes. <laughs> you know, trying to starve yourself. So let's use the word starving instead. So for yeah. people who are listening, th there's various forms of intermittent fasting as bitten. Absolutely. So there's yes. the alternate day fast, which is where you okay. starve and, and maybe just have some fluids and then you eat, I think, pretty much whatever you want the next day. I'm, I'm Between not sure. a certain uh, amount of hours. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes. You have, a, you have an eating window, so to yes. speak. Yeah. Well, the, also, well, so the alternate fast is one day on, one day off. There's the prolonged fasting where you, you eat normally for four to five days and then you take two days where you fast in a week. And yeah. then I think the most popular one is what you just mentioned, the window, where there's the daily fasting. The window can be 16 hours off and eight hours of eating. Eight hours of eating, uh, yeah. Or Six sometimes years, people yeah. will even reduce it to six hours of eating. So literally between 12 and 6 o'clock, that's it. Why is it We that? have a very sensitive brain and we have a very sensitive body. I think our bodies, nobody have really, really done research on our bodies, but I promise I, you, Vera, my experience shows that we have different insulin response that, than other people. We have different sensitivity, volatile blood sugar in our brain. We can get all kind, cr kinds of crazy symptoms, yes. you know, that many think is psychological, but it might be physical. Many times it is. So yeah. I, I like to say that we are like the Ferraris, you know, and normal people are like tractors. Uh, uh, you run them very easily on diesel, and we need very special fuel in order to function optimal. You know, we have also, through the years, with addiction, developed the addictive personality, which yes. is really ego, has to happen right now. We don't learn from mistakes. Uh, you know, that part of the brain doesn't really have a language to express what's going on, so we yes. interpret in all kinds of weird ways. So when we start looking at all these pieces together, that's what I call the red dog, the addictive part of us. Uh -huh. So that means 
that the red dog is always manipulative, it's always scheming and plotting. Yes. But basically, behind all of it, there is you know, a part of the brain in the reward center that really wants the drug to, to any price it can have it. Yes. So it's sort of, once it has had that drug, it wants it back. And also remember that we were exposed extremely early to our drug. Nobody took cocaine when they were two years old or drank alcohol. Yes. So we have a much harder pathway. I would say that our pathway with sugar and flour and food is like an 18 lane highway, uh -huh. whereas maybe alcohol and other drugs are three, four lanes. Yes. So it's always on, it's always on the lookout. And then add the sensitive pancreas, the insulin secretion, the hormonal problems, which you yeah. are excellent at uh, teaching people. And if we start adding all that, yes. you know, we react in a different way. Mm -hmm. So for us to start, you know, doing fasting or keto, or uh, you have to check anything that somebody suggests to you or a fad diet or a new idea or God knows what towards that wall of knowledge yes because you know when you look at keto uh, it's keto bread keto dessert keto this Absolutely. and that i go nuts i was going to ask you about that all oh the i go nuts over that on, on, it's sick it's sick yeah. so it's that's just, not good for food addicts either no 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 it's camouflaged drug yes that's what it is in my world oh, yeah. you can go down low in carb and eat like I do, mm -hmm. you know, but I think it is very important to refuel regularly because you don't want to set that system off because yes. once our system is off, we don't know where it's going to end. Yes. Yes. If I, if I play around with my system, that might end me up laying on the floor, drowning in chocolate. This is starving. This is the starvation diets that we all used to do in our, in our early days. And that's a big warning flag. But uh, to the other population, to the diabetics, to the other people, um, what they're essentially trying to say is that if you um, don't eat, you reduce blood sugar, you reduce the insulin resistance, you reduce the insulin growth factor. So, so you, you're reducing things that are actually favorable to, uh, for, for a diabetic. Um, and potentially even for a food addict, early, early stage. Um, but I think that we would both agree that that's, um, we can probably gain some of those advantages just by a low carb diet, eating on a regular basis. Like we can maintain our blood sugar, reduce uh, insulin resistance. We don't need to go to the extent of fasting without moving into the danger of fasting. No, if somebody would take fasting insulin on you and me, Mm -hmm. and you eat an apple and I eat the same size apple, one yes. of us could have 10 to 100 times higher insulin response to that same amount of food. Right. So we have been really off in the wrong lane when we have just measuring blood sugar. Exactly. So we, don't have a, we don't have a way of measuring insulin um, response, do we? Yes, we do. Today, there are labs that can do it, but it's not done. The whole medical community doesn't know what to do with the answer on C-peptide and fasting insulin. Ah. Very few are trained in that. Yes. But that's where we need to raise awareness and, and we don't, knowledge we don't about have that. We don't have access to that clinically. Like I can't order that test. Um, in Sweden, in Sweden, can we take fasting insulin right now? What I want ah. to say is that somebody could be very skinny yes, and have a lot of visceral fat and be metabolically very, very sick. Yes. You know, with a very high insulin resistance. Yes. And then another person could be overweight, and they could have you know pretty uh, healthier metabol uh, met more metabolic health on the inside. So yes. it doesn't always tell us. And what we know today too, that all this, this is where my point with fasting is. Okay. To, to uh, put your, if you have this sensitive addicted body and you put yourself through on off, which we have done for years, yes. all the diets we have tried, we have yes. starred, we had binge, we had gone to Weight Watchers. I mean, yes. God knows what we've done. Yes. That can really destroy our metabolic health. That can make us very severely insulin resistant. And what I'm trying to say, to go down low keto could be very beneficial. Uh -huh. And once you have gone on a low keto, on a keto for a long time, you might even go down to two meals certain days because it's not going to cause craving. But 
you need to know what you're doing. You need to have an expert that's going to fat adapt you because yes. not everybody can eat uh, the same amount of fat. Yes. Within our community, with our clients, um, they, my patients eat from the same food list, you know, yes. same type of food. Yes. But the fuel mix is very different. Some people don't go very well with very high fat. Mm -hmm. And that has to do a lot with some of the things I work with when I do biochemical repair. Like you and I both agree that uh, for food addicts, uh, this, this, uh, is potentially a dangerous topic or a, a dangerous approach, but it might be possible over time um, with supervision of somebody who knows what they're doing to do some form of fasting, but not right away and not on your own. That would be yeah, fair. But, you know, let me say too, I refuse to use the word fasting. I wonder, that's why I joked and say we should do a dictionary. Uh, yes. I like to call, if somebody is metabolically very unhealthy and yes. have a non-alcoholic fatty liver disease or high insulin resistance, yes. we would do time-restricted eating. Okay. Not right. fasting. Because okay. fasting in people's mind is starving. Okay. But this, is, but this is really, from the way that you're describing it, this is a clinical... Um, uh, this intervention. is medical. This yes, is yes. a medical intervention yes. this we're is not doing. Not something that you just pull on on no, an no, no. intermittent fasting website and follow. Right. Good. Never, never. I'm a, no. I'm and and I used to really point out to people that remember, if you are an addict, you know, you need to talk to addiction specialist. You can't yes. go to, to other people that doesn't understand this yes. sensitivity, this complex illness. Exactly. And part of that complexity, if I can just throw this in as well, is that when a food addict is along the stage of more severe stages, we're also looking at food behaviors like restricting and like uh, binging. And uh, one of the things that I, I see also on the intermittent fasting um, uh, web pages that are not attuned to food addiction is that um, you know you restrict or you restrict and then you can have your reward days or your reward meals and this is exactly uh, the kind of stuff that we don't want to promote uh, when we're talking about food addiction especially severe end. It's horrible and you know eating disorder people are dangerous with food addicts because they believe yes. first in moderation therapy yes. and they yes. keep telling their clients to if you take something away you're going to binge on it later because you took it away because yes. it was forbidden, which is yes. baloney because that binging is relapse actually yes. because they don't understand the addicted brain. So, you know, and also what I like to point out is uh, I have done, you know, the sugar instrument to see if somebody is really addicted, which is yes. very important to know. Yes. That's an instrument I've developed through the years which is excellent to, to show somebody you are really an addict. Well, it is, you know, uh, evaluation we do it, but that's where you can really ask questions that will help you see if you're addicted or not. All right. So you get an answer, you get your whole life in chronological order with all the symptoms, when the first symptoms came, yes. how the illness has progressed and so on. Uh, and uh, then you can relate that to things that happen in your life. Eating, uh, if they have an eating disorder versus a food addiction? Absolutely. That's okay. what it's for. That's exactly okay. what it's for. And that is something I want to say that people with a food addiction that are binge eaters yes. are actually what I call having a process addiction due to the food addiction that's called volume addiction. Yes. Yes. Or restriction is another addiction yes. that if you do, it's a process addiction due to the sugar addiction. Yes. That's Not the other way around. I love so it. That's wonderful. I start wondering, you know, is there anyone that really have a real eating disorder? I don't know, Vera. Yeah. At least I don't work with them. Yes. People yes. like to work with me and know, yes. you know, they can come meet me in Boston. Yes, uh, okay. the, the 17th to the 20th of October, uh, I will do, I've done hundreds and hundreds of four day intensive workshops. It's like a kickoff to find out if you're an addict and embrace it. Because the only way to start working a real uh, recovery is to uh, accept the fact that you have the illness. As long yes. as you close your eyes to that, you're going to look for solutions in the dark. Uh, what Bidden is talking about is uh, she and David Wolf are doing a, uh, a food addiction intensive October 17th to 20th in Boston. Um, and this, will, uh, this is for clients and clinicians both? Yes. I always take trainees on my workshops to teach them how you can do this four-day intensive. And of course, four days is you know, the, the kickoff. Yes. And there is a lot of follow-up. And we also teach, we give people a toolbox for life. 
yes. not for the four days, you know. We tell them, here yes. is where you're going to go now. Okay. So he is a dietitian and I'm a nurse. So yes. we are very used to working with medical abstinence too for people that do have problems. Yes. How to adjust and slowly fat adapt them and low carb them, if I, you know yes. what I mean. Help yes. them, you know, to find a better balance to minimize cravings and feel satisfied. Our body needs to heal. You know, I tell my clients to not eat after 6 p.m. Mm. You know, so you have actually 12-hour fasting, if you want to use the word fasting. But I think it is a, it's a trigger word for, uh, for um, food addicts. Yes. Fasting, starving, you know, yes. lose weight. They are so obsessed with losing weight. Yes. I used to tell people that the only way I can help you lose weight if you need to is to heal your brain. Just uh -huh. losing weight is going to bounce your back even worse. You see, you yes. can't focus on that. You need to focus on healing the brain and healing the addiction. Yes. You know, working with your addictive part. Yeah. I mean, you get can, all those pieces together. Yeah. I mean, you can essentially restrict uh, your diet to the point where you just keep gaining weight as opposed to losing it. Oh, absolutely. You eat yeah. too little, you know, your body puts the brakes on and you lose nothing. You can yes. actually gain weight. Yes. For food addicts, um, what would you like them to come away with after this, after listening to this? Well, that e eating is not everything, Vera. When I work with somebody, what, some of the things we start with is the food, but breathing, 60% of your body's detox mm -hmm. capacity, natural detox, and fat burning metabolic state is due to correct breathing. Most people have the totally wrong breathing. So then, you know, it's about sleep. Sleep yes. is very important. How to sleep. I talk about sleep hygiene. Yes. You know, and then I talk about physical activity, you know, starting where you are. And yes. then I start talk about joy and happiness, you know, how you integrate that. So if you only focus on food, you're not going to get anywhere. You're going to walk in loops. Okay. So okay. it's so important to start adding other health factors than okay. just the food and weight. Okay. Well, if you're a food addict, stay away and ask a professional for help, how you can do time-restricted eating to heal metabolically. Okay. And, and you would be one of those experts uh, and you're available yes. through your website. Yep. I okay. work with it. Yes, um, I do. Thank you so much for your time and giving your story, uh, both uh, introduction to food addiction and then the low carb keto and uh, all your knowledge about intermittent fasting. And I'm really glad that we're on the same page. Basically for food addiction, beware, be cautious. There may be some value, but uh, do it with, uh, it is a medical intervention and do it with expert help. Thank you very much, Bitten.